This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice, we shall rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, this is the day. Yeah, yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Oh, we shall be joy. We shall be joy. We shall be joy. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, 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 this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, we shall be joy. And be glad in it. It is the day. Yeah. This is the day. That the Lord has One more time, one more time. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. We're coming at you again with the word of the Lord. Amen. Hoping that God reaches you and touches you. Helping you to come closer to Christ. Because Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And none of us can get to heaven except by going through him. So hopefully, amen, this will be an encouragement into your heart. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you as we go into the service. Oh, this is the day. Yeah, this is the day. Praise the Lord. Let everybody say amen. 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 We're glad for all of you that have been patiently, amen, and have come from far and near, amen, that we might come together in the name of the Lord. For the Bible says we're two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. Is that right? Yes, amen. Yes. Along with some yes. other things, last week we talked from, I think we talked from Matthew uh, 16. Y'all hold the scriptures that I just gave you, but I think last, last week, we talked from Matthew um, 16, and we talked about uh, 23rd verse when Jesus had turned to Peter and told him, get behind me, Satan. And we talked about, amen, there's a war going on. And the war is going on. It's a spiritual war between right and wrong, left and right, heaven and hell, God and the devil. You against God or against Satan, whichever one you choose to be on. Because if you're on God's side, then you're against Satan. And if you're on Satan's side, then you're against God. Come on and say amen. 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 But uh, as we're going to look at real quick, because it seems like a contradiction. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, in the King James Version, it said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, and the 31st, 4th verse, the 34th, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace, but it's war. Yeah. Now, if you look at those, somebody will say, that's why I can't deal with the Bible. It contradicts itself. But I'm, that's why the Bible also says, if you begin to read it, if it's somebody that overstands and understands, it says in Romans 10, Verse 14 to 17, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? And it's talking about by God, not from the educational system or the theological cemetery, I mean seminary. Uh, it's really sent by God. Because there are a lot of people that have been calling themselves scholars have messed up the understanding of the word of God. And it does look like it contradicts itself. Let's go over it again. In Matthew chapter 10, 34, it says, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. John 16, 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now let's go a little further in Matthew 10, 34, going to 35. For I come to see Set a man at variance, that means disagreement, against his father and his daughter 
against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. In other words, a man's enemies shall be they of his own household. Now, what that saying is, when you come, when when Christ is introduced into the home, right? When Christ is introduced into the home, if you take on Christ, those who oppose Christ, amen, will be at disagreement with you, at variance. So it's peace in Christ. Understand what I'm saying? There's peace in Christ, but there's no true peace in the world. This is why we look for so much peace in alcohol, drugs, sex, and everything else, because there's no true peace in the world. So people are looking for peace, a sedative. Come on, say amen. So some people do it in sex. They do it with money. They do it with drugs. They do it with alcohol. Always looking for some type of peace, some type of sedative, some type of pacifier. Come on, say amen. So this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, in me, there is peace. But in the world, you think there's peace, but there's no peace. That's why you keep on doing the things that you're doing, and some of the things are killing us. Mm -hmm. Come on and say amen. They're killing us. Amen. amen. Uh, I wanted it because I, I was I was looking. Uh, like I said, we we talked the other we talked the, on our last segment. We talked about a war going on, right? Mm -hmm. The war is still going on. And what I I, I want y'all to know, you have to make up your mind what side you're on. Like I said the last time, are you going to be on God's side or are you going to be on the devil's side? Now, it's easy to say that I'm on God's side. Who wouldn't want to say that if you understand with your mind that uh, it's better to be on God's side? Mm -hmm. But how do you walk after this? Like we can talk about this Bible study or, or coming to church or whatever. So people say, uh, I'll get up with you after y'all go to church. They don't want to get with you while you're going to church or while you're going to Bible study. Like, it shouldn't be no getting up with you. I'm going to lay it on the line. It shouldn't be no getting up with you. You know why? Because if I'm going to go to study, go to Bible study and seek God, and I'm going to go right back to the vomit that I'm trying to get free of, you ain't doing yourself no good. Huh? Well, if you go to the doctor, the doctor going to prescribe to you a medicine that's going to help you get yourself together. Amen? And if you don't take it, use a fool. Come on, say amen. Especially if you got a good doctor. Is that right? When you go to the service, the preacher is the doctor. The, the medicine is the word of God. And you are the patient. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get all that medicine. You're going to amen it. Some of you are going to agree with it. Some of you are not going to disagree. But if you want to get well, you got to obey the prescription. The word of God is the prescription. The, do the doctor, the preacher, got to take medicine just like you. But he's, he's, he's exercised, he's educated in the medicine field, amen, to prescribe to you a healing for your sickness. Come on, say amen. That's the same way some people say. That some people say, I can heal myself. You can heal yourself if you know how, but you're going to learn from somebody else. You can walk around here. We like you talking about we de independent. Nobody's independent. You wasn't independent all your life. Your whole life you had to learn from somebody. You had to learn how to walk. You had to learn how to eat. You had to learn how to read, write. And even now, as grown men and women, you're not independent. You're co-dependent on what you have been co-dependently taught. Is that right? So that it'll work within the system. Come on, say amen. You're not in the system by yourself. And even those that try to, 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 uh, to separate themselves, you still have to find somebody like you in order for you to be popular or for whatever you get into to be of any uh a positive result. Amen? Even if you're a devil, you need somebody else on your side. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Huh? All right, so so what seemed like, y'all understand, so what seemed like would be a contradiction just needs to be brought out. Did y'all see that? So Jesus said, think not that I come to bring peace, but I bring a sword. If you go to Revelations, it'll say that when John was on the Isle of Mount Patmos, the very word that came out of Jesus' mouth, right? Will look like a sword coming out of his mouth. You understand what I'm saying? Because why? Because the word is sharper. In Hebrews, they say that in the fourth chapter somewhere. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And now what I want y'all to do is pray that God um, help y'all to understand. Because I done seen notes after notes written time after time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I want you to get it. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes after we write the notes down today, they just stay there and we be saying the same thing, but we haven't we haven't gone any further. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a little tough on y'all. We gotta be tough. Jesus, Jesus didn't play. 
Because, you know, people talk about Jesus. Jesus is love and God is love. Yeah, God is love. But let me ask you a question. I want you to see the very thing. If the deaf angel walked through the door right now, right, and said it's time to die, I don't want you to answer me. Are you ready to go to heaven? Have you been born again? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? In the spirit, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, if you have not the spirit of God, you're none of here. If you go to uh, Acts chapter 19, it, Paul asked the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And he had to be talking, we went over this, he had to be talking about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues because after he laid hands on them, they began to, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. You understand? So I'm not knocking you. I'm the guy to push you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the knock, in order to build, you got to tear down sort of thing. You got because some things get in our way. Whatever is get, that's getting in your way. And, and I, I was praying today as I was getting ready to come. I said, Lord, what? I don't. It, it's not. It's not no good just to be saying words. It's not no good to just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, it's like if you go to an AA meeting or an uh, NA narcotics anonymous meeting or alcohol. You know, how many people do you know that going to the meeting, but they're going out and drinking, right, while they're in AA? How many people do you go to the narcotics anonymous meeting, but as soon as, right, they slipping out and sliding and halfway houses and they shooting dope and dropping, smoking weed and doing everything they can do, but they go right back to the program. Amen. So this is what church is about. Church is N.A. It's, it's, it's all types of meeting all into one because it's God coming to help you clean up. But if you go right back out into the same thing, and I mean, I'm you, come on, we're human. So the point is not being human. The point is, are you trying, though? Are you trying? If you go right back and go to the, I mean, come on, there, there's power in Christ. This is what we talk about. So you, uh, you you selling your soul, you sell, you gambling with your soul. So if the devil came into you right now. The devil know about just as much about Jesus as we know. He's been to heaven. You ain't been there. So what can you tell the devil that the devil don't know? The devil got you doing things you don't know, but he know. He's like a son that was born by a father, taught the right way, and like the prodigal son, and said, "Okay, I heard what you said, Dad, but I want to do it my way." And that's how some of us are with religion, because we'll get mad, too, and we'll say, well, you ain't God. I sure ain't. I'm just telling you what God said. You human just like me. I sure am. I'm just telling you what God said. Because would you want me to play with you? Would you want me to lie to you? Or do you want me to try to help you? And what it's all about here, it's not about just coming to me. Because people think, see, this is where we get caught up. That's why some of the pastors get caught up and, and, and get to and end up slipping, slipping and backsliding right while they're in service. Watch what I said, backsliding, in service. And so you can be in a service but backslidden or never been there. Because if you've never been seeking the Lord and all you're getting is the letter of the word, all you're getting is the information. But what are you doing with the information? What are you doing with it? You just taking it so you can be a brainiac? Y'all excuse me if I sound a little angry. I'm not angry. This is just strength, okay? I'm not angry. But some people have told me online stuff. Oh, you you don't preach with love. Oh, this is love. You got you. It's, this is tough love. You understand what I'm saying? Because okay, because you you try to keep try not to try not to to step on too many. On feel it's, it's not a feelings is out the window right now. Emotions is out the window right now. We trying to get to heaven, at least I am. And since y'all with me, I'm trying to point y'all. I'm, I'm like the bus driver, okay? The taxi driver, the driver. I have to be careful what I'm looking at, what I'm seeing in the road. You understand what I'm saying? You might see some things and can tell me, but I'm the driver. Is that right? So I'm going to be held responsible if the cop pulled me over. I'm responsible if God pulled me over. What did you tell the people? Did you try to put them on the right track? Even if they didn't want to go, did you try? Did you put? Did you exhaust every avenue? You understand what I'm saying? So we talked last week, I think from Matthew 16, right? The, uh, the other one. We talked about how Jesus called his own disciple. He called him a devil, right? Because why? Because when Because he told Jesus, that Jesus wasn't going to die, right? He told Jesus, no, nah, that's not going to happen to you. Was it Matthew 16? 
and 23, yeah. Uh-huh. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. The 22nd verse of Matthew chapter 16. Rebuke him. That's what King James Version said. Saying, be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. What? What shall not be unto thee? Let's go to the 21st verse. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests. Now listen to that, elders. Elders are the people that are supposed to know the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? The chief priests, the overseers, the men that are supposed to be in charge, they were the ones who gave Jesus the most trouble. So what would you think that people under them would do? Because the people who were supposed to know, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, and grandmothers, they were doing it their own way. Yeah, they, they knew a word, right? Let's understand. They, they heard the word from the Old Testament, but now the revelation of the word is right in front of their face. And they're rejecting it. They're telling Jesus what they know. He don't need to know what you know. He needs to know what he, he needs you to know what he's telling you. Be saved. Be delivered. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, I'm going to share something with y'all, too. In John chapter 4, we, we, me and Matthew 16, 22 and 23, John 4, 23, showing you why Jesus called Peter a devil. He called him, get me, he said, get me behind me, Satan. And that's what anybody is. See, it don't matter how strong you think you are. Watch this. It don't matter how strong I think I am. If I deviate from the word, it's Satan. That's what Jesus is showing right there. If Jesus is showing, I don't care how close you are to me, right? Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 16, I believe it's about the 18th verse. Jesus is saying to Peter in that chapter, upon this rock, talking to Peter, right? Upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So now, this is how close Peter was to Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was close enough to Jesus for Jesus to put in his mind the very teaching so he can branch out with other people, right? You go to Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. You'll find all the 12 apostles that Jesus called, right? And one of them was the devil, Judas, right? But they all sat around you. But what Jesus is showing, there's no partiality because you're close to me. You're my brother. You're my mother. You're my sister. You're my aunt. No. When it comes to the word of God, there's no, 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 no. You're either going to be right or you're wrong. That goes from, from the preacher to, the, to anybody. You understand what I'm saying? You're either right or wrong. And this is what Jesus was saying to Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan, because you don't say the things that be of God. You say the things that be of men. Let's go back to... Uh, Matthew 16, 23. Look what he said. But Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou sayest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Now watch this. That things that be of men. So it's a difference in a type, the men that's talking. Because, of course, Jesus, is he's a man. Of course, Peter is a man. Of course, the word of God comes through men. Of course, preachers are supposed to be men. But they're supposed to be men as you go to 2 Peter 1 and I think 19 and 20 to 21. It says, the, the scriptures were not written at any time by the will of men, but holy men under the influence of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's difference between a man and a man being under the influence of God. Because man is not getting the credit. It's God that gets the credit. You understand what I'm saying? God gets the credit. That's why it's the difference between a man that graduates from theological seminary. See, that's the worldly preacher. The worldly church. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence take the violence take it by force. Now, violence don't necessarily mean you got a gun in your hand or a knife all the time. And your mind can be violent. Because now watch the savagery of the world. I'm trying to walk y'all into it. A lot of things that a lot of what people are in in uh influenced by. Is the very opposite of what Jesus did. Jesus just said he called Peter a Satanist. He called him Lucifer. Called him a devil. Get thee behind me, you devil, because you don't speak what God said. You speak in what man said. So if you're not taught by the Holy Spirit, so you're sitting in class, and so that made you a preacher, that made you a bishop, that made you a doctor. That's not, that's not what Jesus is not impressed by you. You're working for the world. You're the preacher of the world. You're not the preacher of the Holy Ghost. 
When you find Paul, Paul was on the Damascus Road denying Christ, didn't understand Christ, only understood like these Pharisees and others stood the Old Testament. But when Jesus called him on the Damascus Road and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Right? He said immediately after this, first he was blinded physically and had they had to lay hands on him. But he said, I conferred with no man, but went out into the death. In other words, he got into a oneness with God. And a lot of y'all, y'all on a oneness with this, you on a oneness with that, but you ain't on a oneness with Jesus. Now, those of you that's not guilty, don't worry about it, okay? But those of you that got a one-on-one -on -one with, with, with whatever, and I, I, I'm saying this not just for those that are here, but we doing a real good. But to some, some people, like, you see people all that smoking weed, they on a one-on-one -on -one with the weed smoker. One on one. Like they can't go to work. They can't do nothing unless they get some weed, some alcohol, some whatever, some sex, whatever. But where is the Jesus? I mean, it's not enough just to, to come to Sunday morning service or Saturday morning service or every now and then a revival service. We need the, the, the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, it says uh, men ought to always, what did I say? Y'all ain't, this is not the first time y'all heard me. Always pray. And Psalm chapter 1, I believe it says, in his law does he meditate when? Day and night. Some of y'all do certain things day and night. Smoke, smoke weed day and night. Drink day and night. Never get tired. Sex day and night. Curse day and night. Fight, feud, make money, whatever you, it's the world. But what, a, but your, if the death angel came in here now, you're not going to go there by how much money you made. You're not going to go there by how much weed you smoke, how much alcohol you drink. Oh, that, that's a big thing. Yeah, man, I could smoke a pound of grass, man. I could drink a, a, a two gallons a day. Is your, what's your body saying? Or what's your mind saying from all that smoke in your system and all that alcohol in your What's your body saying? So are you, are you laughing and joking and we, we, we out there in the street? Yeah, man, yeah, I got it. I got what you need. Do I need that? Do I need that? I need Jesus. But the very thing I need with a man that said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Oh, wait, that ain't popping. That ain't what's popping. That's not what's popular. That's oh, all what's popping. That ain't what's popular. It's popular. Like some people say, oh, it's not Sunday. Well, if what God, today is the day, Psalm 118, verse 24. Today is the day. Today. Whatever day it is, today is the day that the Lord has made. And in Hebrews, it says now, now. When you say you want something now, what that means immediately, right? And the Bible says now, immediately is the time of salvation. Y'all you, you, wasting time. Y'all gambling. You gambling. You gambling with your life. And the reason why I'm coming down so hard, because I don't want to. I could die any moment. Any of, you, any of us could die at any moment. I don't want to be, I don't want you to, it's not no blessing. Oh, are you going to preach my funeral? That's a smile? Uh, no, that's not a smile. And especially if I can't say and don't even believe you going to heaven, that's hurt. That's a hurt. I wouldn't even want to preach your funeral. I probably would do it as, as, as the connection, but I would, wouldn't be happy about it because I couldn't say nothing about you. I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say you're going to hell. Y'all hear me? Oh, this, this sounds rough, don't it? <laughs> it is rough. It is rough, though. But it's real. It's real. The Bible said in John chapter 8, I think it's verse 31, 32, the truth, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Make you free. Do you understand what I'm saying? Make you free. See, we've been lied to. And we, we've been lied to too long. We've been played with. Our mind been played with for too long. And, 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 and folks, let us get by. Like I said with some people, some people just let you be dumb all your life. They're like, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to get into nothing with you. If you're going, and that's the way you believe, so what? But see, this is why God has called people to talk to you. And they hate it. They hate it. Jesus said if you go earlier in uh, Matthew chapter 10, he'll, and, and, uh, he'll tell them that just like they called me a devil, they're going to call you a devil. They hated me. So they're going to hate you. Oh, anybody can love you if there's healing going on. You're getting bread and fish and eating. You understand what I'm saying? It's like I've been passing by some people. Some people don't want, want got everything bad they can say about the church or church people. But let the church or church people be giving out something free. 
Hey, the first one online. Hold it with a nasty attitude. Hold on, I want that. I want that. You know, it's, hold on, you're getting it for free. You ought to be the best man, the best woman you can be since you're online for with a people that you don't like. I feel kind of bad coming to the person's house to eat, do anything, and I can't get along with them. I saw a, a pastor in the, ch in, the, in the store I was at. He didn't speak to me, and I'm pretty sure he recognized me, and, and I didn't speak to him. So when it came down for some of us, I took some people to a church, but I kind of felt, I rolled away. Because I didn't, because my mind was, even, because this was some of the people say that don't go to church. They'll say, well, it ain't his. He's supposed to give it to us. But he's the man of that house. And it's coming to that man's house. So if I didn't respect that man enough to speak to him in the store, and he didn't respect me enough to, to, um, to speak to me, his a title or whoever, whatever he thought he was, if he felt like he was bigger than me. He should have spoke to me, and I would have definitely spoke back. But since I know, I kind of felt from dealing with him how he felt, he didn't speak to me. Maybe he didn't recognize me. Maybe. But I did recognize him, and I didn't speak to him. So I wouldn't feel comfortable going to his house. Because if, if I feel that comfortable, I should have spoke to you on the street. Now, even though what's coming through his church might be to be distributed to anybody, preacher, peasant, anybody. But still, it was a principle involved. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you... There's no honor no more. Well, yeah, there is honor, but a lot of us all over the world don't have it. You know what I mean? The loyalty has gone. We 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 let Satan take over our mind. There's a war going on. The war's still going on. You understand? Now, I was saying early and I got off the subject that um I was praying, Lord, what can I say to the people? I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't. I'm not. Never, I'm not tired of talking. So don't understand what I'm going to say. I'm tired of talking, tired of preaching, tired of teaching, and it's not going anywhere. For the ones that's not going, if it's going somewhere with you, I'm not talking to you because you know sometimes you know what I mean. But I want to hit the ones who need to be hit. Okay, I want to hit all of you where you need to be hit. And that's the thing about being a speaker. The spirit got to hit hit somebody with that, somebody with that, somebody with that. So what's not for you? Leave it alone. Don't get mad about it. And if you do, then ask the Lord to save you. But uh, so I said, Lord, what can I say that could help the people rather than me just talking? I love talking, but when I say so, I don't, I, I'm getting tired. What it means is I want to see results. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to see, but it's not based on me alone. It's based on the power of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's go to Ephesians. In uh, Ephesians chapter 5. And let's take a look at it. Because something jumped in my head. And, and I'm going to see if y'all can, you all can walk with me. Right in Ephesians chapter 5, I wish one of the nieces was here. Because somebody said, you always, you just want to say what man said. You always just want to be on the man's side. I'm going to tell y'all right now. And I'm doing a broadcast. I'm not on the man's side. Man is a sinner. Man fell weak to a woman. I'm, I'm emphatically uh, focused on that, even with myself. As much as I'm a man, I'm attracted to a woman or to, to women to find a woman. If the devil is in that woman and I'm attracted to her, the devil, I'm attracted to the devil too. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I have to be very sharp in my head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because Satan is a slick joker. Y'all listening to me? Adam and Eve were perfect. You can't, Eve can't say Adam did nothing to her to make her fall in line with the devil. She only can say that on her own that she got influenced. Do you understand what I'm saying? But, but Adam himself, what was his reason for falling? Since he was perfect and the devil wasn't even talking to him. Only thing I basically can see is he wanted to please the woman. So he got so caught up in pleasing the woman, he forgot to please God. And that's what I'm saying as a man. Anytime that y'all think I'm saying something chauvinistic or I'm pro-man, I'm pro-man in the fact that Genesis 127 says that God created man in his image. In the image of God created he, him, and man is in the image of God supposed to be carrying on the, 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 the pattern of God, the rules of God, and what God wants. You understand what I'm saying? Now. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Don't y'all stay with Ephesians 5 because I got a lot on my mind. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
because I want I want you to share I want to share this with you so the the women here will understand where I'm at as well as the men. Because if a man is wrong, a man is wrong. But two wrongs is not going to make a what? Wrong and wrong equal what? More wrong. All right. Uh, let me show you something in First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse nine. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Y'all see that? So if the if the man the man was created for God, do you understand what I'm saying? But the woman was created for who? For the man. That's what the book say, right? Now, some people may have discrepancy with the book, with the Bible. If you have discrepancy in any way with the Bible, you're going to have discrepancy with your salvation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're going to have to believe it whether you like it or not. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 5.17, says we walk by faith and not by sight. So in order for you to get into God, you got to change your way and go with God's way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you look at the book and say, oh, man wrote that book. That's in the favor of man. You, you, you lost. You, you might as well give it up. Because it's not going to help you. You can't pick out certain scriptures that you like and then certain scriptures that come and step on your toe. That's just like a ministry. People love to preach as long as he's saying things that they like. But then when he step on their toe, oh, man, uh-oh, you meddling now. Now you, It's a trouble now. You know what I mean? No, uh-uh. It's your time now. Time for you to get the word because you got you have to become stronger. And you're not going to get stronger by nobody saying anything to you. And maybe it wasn't your time the other time. It was other people's time. You hear people in the church, amen, brother pastor, amen. But when you finally hit them, yeah, he's meddling now. He needs to shut. He's taking a little bit too long now. I mean, they, that same person that was amen when it was on somebody else, you sure are talking right, Reverend. You know what I mean? They, they the first one to holler out. You know what I mean? They almost stand it up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They on the reverend side. Start coming down their aisle, though. You know what I mean? Man, don't, man, don't he just, he preach a long time, don't he? Oh, God. You know what I mean? Now, I don't think that's in the Word. And you be right in the Bible. You know what I mean? Because now you're hitting them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you got to clean up. The bottom line is you got to clean up. It's not about... Pointing the finger at everybody else about the Bible is to come to you. For God so loved the world, put your name in. For God so loved you, he so loved me. So, because when you stand before God, it's like going to court. You're not going to be standing for nobody else. You're going to be standing for you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, for if, I'm going to the sixth verse. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shaven. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shaven, Shaving or showing or shaving, covered or shaving, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image. Watch this. See, it don't say that a woman is the image of God, because you hear even some preachers say, we all in the image of God, right? Here's the book. Go back to Genesis 127. It says, in the image of God created him. God, God made man his image, and the image of God created he him. Period. Then it says, male and female created he them, right? But here, to confirm, it says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of what? Of man. See, you represent the man. So even if the man is wrong, the woman represents the man. But if the man got his mind right, he would understand that since you are the head of it, you don't want to be uh, a head junkie. In your, in your woman's life. You don't want to be a head alcoholic, a head a thief, a head racketeer, because you're going to bring that to your family. Am I making myself clear? So you want to give, since you are the head, you want to give yourself to the head. Now let's go to the beginning. Be you, in the first verse of um, 1 Corinthians 11, be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, who? Brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the what? The ordinance, that means the order, as I deliver them unto you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is who? Christ. And the head of the woman is what? The man. And the head of Christ is God. So yeah, you the head of the woman, and a lot of us sticking our chest out, yeah, I'm the head of the woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, but is Christ your head? So even though you're the head of the woman, if Christ is not your head, so you got the devil ruling you, so you ruling your woman with demons. And you, you want her to do the right thing. You want her to stay home. You want her to don't do this and don't do that. But you're not following nothing but the death. Uh, you know, for a minute, the, the women can say amen. But I got an, another scripture that even if you get involved with that type of man, you're still supposed to obey him. That's First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. But now we're going to go to Ephesians, what I say, 5? Because we're going to deal with something else. Because don't nobody want to uh, just be bossed around and no love there. Come on, say amen. All right, let's read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. So I know some of y'all might say, I'm not married. If you having sex, you married. Or you committing sin. You make up your mind. You committing sin. If you committed to one man, one woman... That's marriage. The two come together shall be what? One. Amen. So maybe you have not crossed the legal ramifications yet, but you doggone sure crossed the natural ramifications. So if you're not considering that woman your wife and you're not considering that man right now, today, as your husband or your wife, then you commit fornication. And right now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Give it, somebody give me first, well, just read it. I, 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 I need to go through this fast. There's a lot of things on my mind. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Right, I'm already there. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What? The who? The unrighteous, Right? shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because some people think, I'm just going, God is so loving since I heard that God was loving, I can do whatever I want to do, and somehow at the end of the, of the trip, I'm going to end up in heaven. You understand what I'm saying? But listen to what the word said. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is a question mark there. You see that? It says, you don't, it's asking, you don't know that? All right, now it's going to give you something. Be not deceived. Be not, what deceive mean? Don't be tricked, right? Don't be fooled. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Neither the fornicators, y'all looking at that? Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, y'all looking at that? Nor the effeminate, that's men acting like women, or, or homosexuals. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, homosexuals. Nor thieves, nor covetous, you want things because other people got it. The world got us in that, in that mindset. They got it, I got to have it. That's covenant. Because if you go back to the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, one of the commandments, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's house, or anything that belongs to the neighbor. Don't worry about what the Jones has got. Let God bless you. Okay? Uh, uh, where we at? Drunkards. Y'all reading that? Mm -hmm. Nor revilers. That means just loving, having a, a good time. Uh, extortioners, that means tricking people out of stuff, whether by threat or any other way, right? Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Y'all see that? And then it says, such were, when Paul was talking, he said, such were some of you. You were that. But you are washed now. So if you are fornicated, what you supposed to do? Get what? Washed. If you are adulterer, what you supposed to do? Get what? Washed. If you are uh, abusing yourself with being a drunkard, what are you supposed to do? Get washed. Or any other thing, extortioner, all that stuff. Get what? Amen? Now, did y'all read that in the Word? Amen. Okay, now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, women, submit yourself to your own husbands, your own men, as unto the Lord. Y'all see that? See, this is why it wouldn't be better if a man is a righteous man. Because, you see what it said? Obey him as unto the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? As unto the Lord. That means equal to. So a woman talking about, no, I got to obey God. I ain't obeying my, my man. You shouldn't even be with that man then. Because that's, that's against the word of God. Now let's go to the next verse. For the husband, the man is the head of the wife, the woman, right? He is the savior of the body. Uh-oh, savior. So if he's the savior, that means you brothers that sticking your chest out that's with a woman. It ain't about walking around the house puffed up. 
acting a fool, drunk out of your mind, or cursing her out, calling her below uh, name level because you want to do what you want to do and don't want. You're supposed to be the savior of the body. Savior is what you say in saving her. So I'm going to say this adult-wise because I went over this sermon in my head before I got here when I was asking God what I'm going to say. So I'm not going to apologize. Maybe I should because some men, preachers don't say nothing. But it's more than getting an orgasm in the nut. Y'all got that? It's more than getting a paycheck. Y'all got that? Somebody say amen. Now, am I here by myself? Amen. I'm going to say it again. It's more than getting an orgasm in the nut. Because some people that think that think what a man and woman for. Just get an orgasm in the nut or somebody to help me with the bill. No, it's more than that. We, you're supposed to become one and be focused on helping each other get to heaven. If the woman is to help me, that means when you, whatever you doing, whatever your agenda is, she's to help you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we're talking about the mind of Christ. Because if we go back to... Uh, what was it, Matthew 16 and 23, where, where uh, Jesus called Peter, said, get thee behind me, Satan. Some of us, we, are you helping your woman get to Christ? Are you, every man in here, not to answer me, are you helping, is your main focus helping your woman get to Christ? Rent, money, bills, sex, all that's beautiful, but that all that is what? Flesh. So, okay, like Jesus said in another thing, all that you all have done, but you left the most important thing out. Are y'all praying together? Are you telling, are you making sure that y'all on the right focus for Jesus Christ? Are you seeking the Holy Spirit? If the Lord came right now, even if he didn't just come through the wall, come to the door, if he said, and you could look out the people and know it's Jesus, would you be ready to let him in? If the deaf angel didn't come through the door or come through the wall and said, and you know that the deaf angel is coming to get you, would you be able to let him in and say, I'm, I'm okay? Because I'm just going to be resting in the Lord. Because see, that's another contradiction. Because Jesus said, if you come to me, you shall never die. People say, but you die. So what you don't understand is, see, it's not a contradiction. Because if you die in Jesus, you're going to be resurrected under life. So you're not dead. You're resting. Just like with Lazarus. Lazarus, when they said, first Jesus said to his disciples when he got the message, he said, Lazarus is asleep. They said, Lord, okay, if he's asleep, let him rest. Jesus said, y'all don't understand, he died. I got to leave, we got to leave here. He didn't just stop everything he's doing because Jesus always said, let the dead bury the dead. But because he had something to do with the family and a reason and a mission that God had given him, he said, all right, we going to Mary and Martha's house, to Larry's house, and we're going to have, we're going to do what we do. They thought they were going for the funeral and end up having a resurrection. See, when you when you in God, see, people think they're going to a river, but you're really going to have a resurrection. Y'all got me? So just the same thing. Now, it's another contradiction. Now, I'll cover two contradictions. Now, just like when I said Jesus talking to God. I thought you said he was God. Yes. If you look at 1 Timothy 3.16, it says without an argument, without controversy. King James says controversy. Controversy is argument, right? Without an army, God was manifested in the flesh. You didn't see God. Jesus said, no man has seen my father, and nobody knows him like he knows me, and nobody knows him like I know, But and who I reveal him to. That's why I be in that same chapter with uh, in Matthew 16, before he just got finished praising Peter. Who do men say that I am, Peter? Oh, some say you Elijah, some say you prophet, some say you Jeremiah. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. But see, no matter how close you get with God, you still got to be humble because you can lose out. you just like that. See, the devil can sl sl slip in because you are you're in the flesh, but you got to depend on the spirit. You see what I'm saying? Because, see, this flesh is going to die. So death and, and life is fighting in you. You understand what I'm saying? See, some of us, right, while we're in the summer, even when in church, people say, oh, man. The football game. Oh, man, it's time for chicken. You know what I mean? Oh, man. You understand what I'm saying? We don't feed on the word of God like we feed on other things. We don't thirst on the word of God like we thirst. And we can drink other stuff all day. And let me throw this in here to you. All of us, all of us, let me say this for those that listening. All of us need to drink more water. Did you know that your body is 75% water? Did you know that your brain is 85% water? That's one of the statistics, right? So guess what? 
If you're drinking a gallon of Kool-Aid, you ought to be drinking two gallons of water to drink that, get that out of your system. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of us right here, if you have any type of sickness, listen to me now. Listen to the man of God. If you start from this day, in the name of Jesus, start drinking because I tell you more water, I guarantee you're going to see some results in your life. Drink more water. What did I say? Now, for those of you that are slick, I got something for you too. Because some people say, man, I drink plenty of water. No, that means drink less of what you've been drinking other than water. It means drink more water and, what did I say? And less, whatever, I don't care if it's Kool-Aid, less Kool-Aid and more water, okay? And if you drink, and if you know, if you can't stop, then drink, just pay attention to what you do. I don't care if it's Kool-Aid or alcohol. If you're drinking a gallon of, of Kool-Aid or a gallon of uh, gin, booze, whatever it is. But I want to put that because some folks say, well, he didn't say alcohol. So so they because you didn't say it, they think they got by. See, this is why I say certain things. Because, you know what I mean? Because people was like, they so slick. Oh, well, he didn't say vodka. He didn't say VSOP. Whatever you're drinking, whether it's sugary or alcoholic, all of them, you need to drink more water. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Jesus even said in John chapter 4 to the woman at the well, he said, if I give you the water that I drink, he said, you'll never thirst again and you'll be healed. He was talking about spiritual water. Now, all over the world, just like air, there's water, right? Did you know, can, and just think common, you don't even have to be a scientist. Did you think whatever you put water in, it weakens it down, right? Your kidneys, your liver need to be flooded, flush. And some of y'all ain't flushing around. You think because you drink water that you're all right. No, but you 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 put more toxins. So it's just like a person on a diet. You can run and run and run and run and run and run and do exercise, exercise, exercise. But if you're not eating the right food, you're going to put that weight right back on. Come on, say amen. Huh? So you got to change your diet. Or if you don't change it, you got to work even hard. So same thing with the water. You have to drink even more water. But most of y'all, after you eat right or you drink water, you turn around and mess it all up. It's like waxing the floor and going outside in the mud and just come right back and walk all over the floor. Did y'all get my point? So don't you out slicking yourself. Then when you got ailments and sicknesses, then you, when somebody tell you what to do, you don't want to listen. So you're dying, you're killing yourself and won't live. Somebody say amen. All right, back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives of women be subject to their own husband, their own man, and all things. Now, here's the important scripture that I'm going to jump on. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself what? Now, most women would jump up for joy to hear that scripture. But let's deal with it, men and women. Men, love your women, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself what? So that means if, you, if you're not giving yourself, what did Christ do? He formed the church, Matthew 16 and 18. Upon his right, he made the church. You make the woman what she is, even if you don't. See, that's, see, everything comes from man. Father to the husband. Father to the man that she's going to be involved with. That's why a woman doesn't carry on the, the family name. It's always through the man. Because even when, if, if, if a, a woman has a son and she don't even give the son the name of the father, the son doesn't carry on her father, on the mother's father's name. He carries on the one to whom she got pregnant by. So even if, if, if her name was Jones, but her maiden name was Scott, and she said, well, I'm going to name my son Scott because I like the Scott name. Her son does not carry on the Scott menu. He's confused because he carries on Jones. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it was the Jones that gave her the, the pregnation. Am I making sense? Y'all got me? Mm -hmm. So she might want to keep her maiden name and, or say, well, he didn't do what I wanted to do, so I'm not going to give him the Jones name. But the son carries on the Jones lineage. He does not care, even if he don't know it, even if he got the wrong name. So now he's confused. You understand what I'm saying? So he thinks he's carrying on a bloodline that he's not carrying. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? And we got a lot of people that have done that. And and, and we talk about, I, I'm doing another sermon right now, how that came in my head, knowledge of self. Because I, I was talking to a brother, that, Man, knowledge of self. If you don't have no knowledge of your father and your father, all of us, that's right here, right now. We talk, because some people don't even want to deal with the Bible because they say the Bible is the white man's book. If you don't understand all of you of color that don't understand your father, you don't understand who you are because you didn't come from your mother alone. What was in your mother, you came from your father. Amen. I don't care whether you liked them or didn't like them. You came from who? Daddy. Man was made in the image of God. And so you got to get over that hump. Huh? You got to get that healing. Some of us need to be healed from who our fathers are, who our mothers are. Y'all understand me? But all of us first, you come from first father, then mother. What did I say? Then mother. Because it comes from the father to get into the mother. I was just even listening to Shirley Caesar, and she always singing about mother, right? I was listening. I said, what's something about her always disturbed? I was thinking, listening to another song, making a CD for God. I said, she's saying, my most popular person, my mother, this person, and, and women, never her father. Maybe she don't. Maybe she had a problem with her father. But as a woman, and especially now, which God forbid, because the Bible don't say a woman's supposed to be no pastor. Because First Timothy chapter three says, if a man desire the office of a bishop, Amen. Let him be the husband of one wife. Didn't say vice versa, the wife of one husband. Okay, bishop, pastor, overseer, whatever you want to be. So then, but then when you listen to these women, sometimes the women have a problem with men. Even women right now in relationship. Some of y'all got problem with men, what you've been through with a man or men. And even though you might have a man or men, and same with brothers. Some of you don't have problems with women or women, but you need to be healed. You need to be on your knees asking God to deliver you so you can be right in the relationship that you're in if you have one. Because you're not going to be right with God until you get it right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Some of us got a problem with our father. Some of us got a problem with mother. You can't change the past. And if you live this long, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. Go back to uh, Matthew 6, verse 14. Because if you don't forgive, your heavenly father won't hear. And guess what? Your healing depends on your forgiving. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? It's a war going on. Amen. <laughs> I've been here for 52 minutes, so we're going to try to just give y'all eight more minutes. Praise the Lord. All right? Y'all all right? But let's look at one more thing, okay? Matthew, husbands, love your wives, or men, love your women, as Christ also loved the church. That means you can't be, Christ didn't, Christ wasn't trying to be, uh, uh, he told you to be in the world, but not of it. The scripture says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Is that right? But now go to John 3 and verse, give me verse 17. Uh, I'm going to read it because I'll probably be there before you will. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on Jesus is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Now, it's not talking about a mental belief where you just say, I believe. It's talking about belief where you start practicing Living the principles of Jesus. Now let's go back to Ephesians 5, 25. Men, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. So it's not, don't love them like the world. That's okay before you knew the Lord or anything about the Lord or anything about heaven and hell. But now that you know something about the Lord, you should love them more than just the worldly way. It's good. Got a good man that's, that's out there. You, you busting your hump out every day. You, you bringing money home. But then you shouldn't be throwing no money away in the streets neither. Don't throw none out there. Don't, don't give all your, don't be a, 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 a addicted to nothing. So we got to come to Jesus to get delivered so you can be that man, amen, that loved your woman as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ gave himself. In other words, so he didn't set trip. He didn't try to be befriend the world in the wrong way. What he did was tell the world, listen, y'all got to get right. You understand what I'm saying? You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? All right, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from certain meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. Um, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, that thou should be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whence thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wise faith. In other words, just don't go with stuff just because somebody said it. Know the word. And exercise thyself rather unto God. For bodily exercise, it's good to do some exercise and push up and pull up, but that profit little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is, is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. Now, the Bible just said in the last days, folks will not endure sound doctrine, right? But they'll, they're going in, into other stuff, doctrines of demons, seducing spirit. What is seducing? When you seduce a person, that means that you try to get them to do what you want them to do, right? We covered this before. I mean, we just, a lot of stuff we just going over. See, just, see, you learn by rehearsal and repetition. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. You didn't learn your A, B, C just by somebody going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Like, right, what was that? You had to keep on going over. Is that right? And that's the same thing with the Word of God. Amen. So we learn some things that we are still under attack. We're under attack by demons. We're under attack by forces of evil. Those things that are drawing you, even right while you are thinking about the word of God, there's something else telling you, come on, man, let's, let's do this. We want it. You know what I mean? Sometimes, but Jesus said, you that hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 But you got to seek the Lord while he may be found. Hmm. And call upon him while he's near. This is, see, we need, this needs to become so a, a, a part of us that just like we do it when you, when people have a good time when they drink it, they can drink all for hours. We ought to be able to talk about the word of God for hours. Hallelujah. It ought to be in you. Hallelujah. But people, when you do that, they say, brother, you are, you are fanatic. Well, in the word fanatic means I'm a fan. And if that's going to get me into heaven, hallelujah, then let me be a fanatic for Jesus. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. So I hope that y'all learn something as we get ready to close. Men, yeah, you are the head. Even if you, whether you're legally or unlegal, you are the head in a relationship with a woman. But what kind of head are you? Are you a demon head or are you a Jesus head? Where is your head? Come on. Can I get a witness? And you say, well, she ain't got every eye in the Crossing every teeth. Well, guess what? <laughs> Neither are you. Praise the Lord. Say, so, what are we going to do today? Hopefully, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking yeah. sand. Amen. I'm going to keep on seeking for the Lord. Uh, I'm going to keep on trying to be filled uh, because God said, if you hunger, uh, he will feed you. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He said, if you're thirsty, I will give you the drink. Can I get a witness? Ah, yeah. uh, you got your mind on things of the world. But I'm telling you, just like sickness, there's some things you can do, but there's something only God can do. But you got to seek Him. You got to put your head down sometimes and just call on the name of the Lord. Can I get a witness? I'm going to call Him in the morning, call Him in the noonday, call Him late at night. You ought to call Him like you call some other thing. Put Christ first. Amen. Seek Him first. Matthew 6 and 30. Three. says seek the Lord first and all these other things will be added unto you. You don't have faith, but God wants to give you faith because faith comes from God. Can I get a witness? Faith comes from God. It's just not going to jump on you from man or woman, but faith comes from God. Faith means to believe that God can and believe that God will and believe that God shall. And if you believe God, you got to keep on seeking him. Can I get a witness? I'm going to call him no matter how weak I seem because he promised to make you strong. Can I get a witness? I'm going to call him no matter what it looks like because he said it will be all right. Didn't we just read in John 16 and 33? In the 
world. You're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The world don't like you if you hold on to Jesus. Because you're going to have a light that shines on the world. It's going to be a light that shines on people in darkness. And they're going to get mad because their deeds are evil. But on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I can't help but call him. I can't help but trust him. On Christ, because I know he is. He feeds me. He feeds my mind. And when he feeds my mind, my soul gets filled. Can I get a witness? He'll fill your mind. But you got to seek him. You got to push something aside. Maybe you got to push a glass aside. Push a plate aside. Push a place aside. Push a thing aside. Push some people aside. And say, oh, I'm Christ. The sun and rock. I stand. Can I get a witness here? Oh, God. Oh, God. He's going to come one day. He's soon to come. He's coming on the tide. And every eye will see him. Will you be ready when he comes? But the only way to be ready, you got to stand up in the Holy Ghost. You better repent of your sin. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, Repent. Be godly sorrow. Be baptized in the name of Jesus and seek the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? You need the Spirit of God. On Christ. Christ. I call his name. Fill me with the Spirit. It ain't in no other name. I don't care how famous he is. A famous she is. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I don't care what they talk about. The Bible say in Matthew 24, in the 24th verse, it said it'll be false Christ and false prophet. And if in this last day, if it were possible, it'll fool the very elect. But Jesus said, I am he that was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. Every book just about proved there was Jesus. Can I get a witness? You got to trust him. You got to call him. You call on everything else. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. I don't want to just be preaching to you. And, and what if we never see each other again? On Christ. That's what it's on. He said, John 14 and 6, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No man, no man can come to the Father but by me. So if you see God without Christ, it's not going to be a good deal. That's like seeing the judge without a lawyer, and you're guilty. <laughs> the judge is going to say, well, I sympathize with you, but I got to go. You know what the law says. Yeah, that's the sad thing when the judge says, well, I sympathize with you, but you know the law. And ignorance of the law is what? They say now, no excuse. That's what they say. You say, well, I didn't know. They say, well, ignorance of the law. You're going to know now. You'll know now. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is, let him be your lawyer. Can I get a witness? Let him be your doctor. Praise the Lord. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Huh? We're in a war. We're in a continued war. Satan yeah. is trying to go for our first Peter 5 and 8, your adversary, your adversary. So people think, he, the devil come at you with different things, persons, mm -hmm. places, and things that make you think that, oh man, the world is just your friend. You just you living it up. You're not living it up. If you're going to hell, that's not no good thing. And you know what the problem that we have is that we can't, we can't see. see. See, God need to open up your eyes so you can see beyond this world, at least by faith. I believe in the heaven and hell. I don't know if y'all don't believe it. Because if you really believe in the heaven and hell, man, you, you take life safe. Because guess what? As long as we live right now and other people that are younger than us die, well, what, what are we doing? We're gambling here. Yeah. We're gambling. That's exactly what we're doing. Who who told you which one of us can go in there, even if you got an insurance policy laid out for whatever? But who can go in there in your drawer and pull out and say, okay, this is the day I'm going to die? You don't know. You can die right now. Is that right? So what, what insurance policy do you have with God if you don't have the Holy Spirit? Do you, you see what I'm saying? This is how serious it is. And we'll go back. Some of us will go back and forget about it. Like nothing ain't happened. I can't forget. Jesus, I'll never forget. 
what you done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought, you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Tell me how could I forget what you've done for me. Put your hands together, please. How can I forget how you set me free? Tell me how can I forget how you brought, you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought, you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, never.